everyone, my name is Gisela Trevino coming to you from Children's Museum Houston. I am the Para Los Niños manager here, a program that takes the museum out into the community bringing you family fun shops. Today we're going to share with you about this program plus much more that can better prepare your child for success in school and beyond. Children's Museum Houston through the Para Los Niños program provides parents with resources, strategies, and activities to improve family literacy, learning practices, and parents' abilities to serve as their child's first teacher. The project was created through a partnership between Children's Museum Houston and Houston Public Library and has been implemented in public libraries in the Houston, Harris, and Fort Bend County area. Also, thanks to the initiative of the Houston Health Department and the Children's Learning Institute, the program reaches out to community centers and schools around our city. One of the topics we share with the families is called Raise a Reader. Through this session, we encourage family literacy routines to grow the love of reading in your children. Research demonstrates reading to and with children is a vital foundation for their learning. For example, today we are bringing you one of our family's favorite topics, dinosaurs, with a story called, Oh Say Can You Say Dinosaur? All About Dinosaurs by Dr. Seuss. Let's get started. I'm the cat in the hat. You've met me before. Today I will speak of the great dinosaur. Dinosaurs lived on the earth long ago, before you and me. So how do we know? From fossils. Dinosaur teeth, eggs, and bones got stuck in the muck. Then that muck turned to stone. These fossils are old. They are dusty and worn because they were made long before you were born. Not hundreds of years, not thousands of years, but millions of years, long before you were born. Dinosaur hunters dig in the ground. All over the earth, these fossils are found. The hunters use tools to chip all day. The fossils come loose, then they pack them away. Fossils can crumble because they are old, so dinosaur hunters must first make a mold. To the dinosaur labs, every bone, tooth, and bit is carefully shipped to see how they fit. Is this a leg bone? Maybe a muzzle? It's a crazy mixed up dinosaur puzzle. Step up and enter the museum hall where dinosaurs stand. Some are big, some are small. Here we play the best of all games. Oh say, can you say the dinosaur names? And after you've said them, you then get to see them in the Cat in the Hat Super Dino Museum. Dinosaurs names are not easy to read, but give it a try. I will help if you need. Oh, say can you say ang ke la sa rus ang ke la saurus ankylosaurus with a club for a tail and a back full of spikes. This dino was strong, like an army tank. Yikes! Ankylosaurus. Now, can you say my asora? My asora? My asora? There's one thing that we know that this dino did best. She kept her kids cozy and safe in their nest. She kept the nest tidy, she got her kids food, she was a good mother to her dino brood. There's the babies. Ty ran a saw rus rex. Tyrannosaurus rex. You said that quite nicely. Now you'd better go. T-Rex is no kitten. I think you should know. 
This T-Rex was strong, with long teeth, sharp as knives. When most dinos saw him, they ran for their lives. T-Rex was a hunter. Carnivore is the name that we give to dinos like this, who ate meat to live. Oh say, can you say, Triceratops? This dinosaur's head had three horns. One, two, three. Upon it, sticking up out of a hard sort of bonnet. But though he was smaller and not half as fierce, his head was too hard for a T-Rex teeth to pierce. So after a few dozen snaps at his face, T-Rex looked for dinner in some other place. Oh say, can you say, a uh, pat, a uh, saw, rus, a uh, pat the saurus? I've gotten this rather tall ladder here for us to see eye to eye with this Apathosaurus. These dinos' long necks, there's their long necks, reached up high into trees where they fed on green leaves just as much as they pleased. Herbivore is the name that we give to dinos like these who ate plants to live. Can you say brack e a so rus brack e a saurus brachiosaurus? This dino was taller than 51 feet. And just how much food do you think he could eat? Nearly as much as a truckload of hay is what he would gobble day after day. That's how he grew to the size as you can see. The cat in the hat just comes up to his knee. You see the cat in the hat? He's nowhere as smart as you and or me. His brain is the size of a small zucchini. A zucchini. That's his brain. Oh, say, can you say iguan a don? Iguanodon? Iguanodon. What he did with his thumb, we think that we know. We think that he used it to jab at his foe. See his sharp thumb? Now say Dinonicus. Dinonicus. Terrible claw is what its name means. We think that this dinosaur hunted in teams. Can you say Archaeopteryx? 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 This fine feathered friend is the earliest known. This bird might have glided. This bird might have flown. One thing we must ask, and we must be quite firm, is this bird was so early. Did he catch the worm? It's getting late now. I see night is falling. The museum is closing. Your mother is calling. The dino's the earliest cat that is known. No one has seen it. It's never been shown. It's super terrific. It stands here before us. Oh say, can you say? Cat in the hat a saurus. Cat in the hat a saurus. There he is. Do you think that's a real dinosaur? The end. Wow, that was an amazing story. Reading introduces your child to new experiences, ideas, and concepts that they might not encounter otherwise. When reading, your children can immerse themselves in the book and the story it tells. That is why favorite books that your kids read over and over are always important. Now let's join my partner Belkis for an extension activity on this story. Hello everyone, my name is Belkis Hernandez. I am one of the Paralos Niños educators. We are here in Eco Station at the Children's Museum Houston to show you a Dino Racer Reader activity called Digging Up a Story. 
The idea is to act as a paleontologist to find dinosaurs in order to retell the story and look at these characters in a critical way to develop reading comprehension. What you need is a plastic container full of rice, toy dinosaurs, excavation tools such as shovel, rake, and brush. And we need a magnifying glass. What you and your child will do is, first, hide the dinosaurs that related to the story in the rice. Then, let your child choose the excavation tools to dig in the rice and find the characters hidden. You can help your child to carefully clear the fossil. Meanwhile, talk about the characteristics of the dinosaur or read a sentence related in the book. You can say, what does it look like? Do you know its name? Does it have spikes, sharp teeth, or a long tail? It has short arms? Looks like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Encourage your child to match the dinosaurs with the characters in the book or sort the prehistorical animals by any criteria. Make reading fun by allowing your children to read books with topics that interest them. This activity can be done about sports, fairy tales, trucks, and superheroes. Follow your child's leads. They are good teachers. While children are engaging with a specific theme, it is important to go beyond the learning adventure discovering new words. The more words your children know, the better prepared they will be to read. For example, when talking about dinosaurs, we learn about the word fossil and paleontology. And to know more about these concepts, let's join Jason. Hello Houston, this is Jason Hammond again, the ACE manager from the Children's Museum Houston, here to now tell you about paleontology. And we're going to talk about paleontology in a different way than most people are used to. And the way we're going to do it is we're actually going to fossilize how lots of insects got fossilized and we're going to show a fossilization model of how plants get fossilized. We're going to start with the insects. So what you're going to need are these sort of like souffle cups, uh, clay, top coat, and top coat uh, is what is used to put over paintings to keep them from like you know fading out or something like that. Uh, so when top coat dries, it dries kind of clear, so you can see what's inside. We're gonna make it look like amber though, so we're gonna add some yellow food coloring and some red food coloring. We're gonna need one of these one ounce cups. That's where we're gonna put the top coat in and the food coloring in. We're gonna need a toothpick to mix the top coat. And we're gonna need an insect to preserve. So right here is my cricket or grasshopper. I don't know quite what it is, but that's what I'm gonna preserve. So that's what we're gonna to need to make this. So first thing is first is everyone's gonna need one of these souffle cups. Just set it down, open up your bag of clay, and everyone's gonna need a little bit of clay. And I'd say, Maybe this much clay would do, okay? This actually might be a little bit too much. I'm gonna take a little bit off. And you're just gonna roll it in a ball. So maybe a ball like this size, okay? And then you're gonna put this at the bottom of your souffle cup and you're gonna spread it out. So here's what happened. This little insect was, you know, flying around, hopping around, whatever it was doing. And it landed on a tree or something like that that had some resin on it or some sap. And this resin or sap can harden and preserve itself and then we call it amber. So probably stepped on some amber and it got stuck inside. So right now it's stuck, okay? And it's like unhappy because it's stuck. It's like, dang it, I'm stuck, all right? Then what happens is because it's stuck on this amber, more amber flows over. And remember like amber's like this kind of like, it's almost like this like, um, it looks almost like honey that kind of comes out of a tree and can like, you know, flow over things. It's got pretty high viscosity, it's pretty um, thick. So, 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and emulate this uh, amber by creating some of our own. So we're gonna take our top coat and we're gonna fill up the one ounce cup almost to the top. You don't have to go quite to the top, just like this, okay? And be sure to close everything up because if you drop anything here, it's gonna make a mess. And then you're gonna take your, sorry, I dropped my toothpicks. You're gonna take your red food coloring and you're gonna put about a drop of that in there. All right, and then you're gonna take your yellow food coloring and maybe put two drops of yellow food coloring in. All right, and then you mix it with the toothpick. That should do it, that's good. All right, so like this, okay? And then very simple, like I said, you just kind of pour it around and over the insect. Like I said, I always like to keep a little bit of the insect uh, sticking out so you can see what's inside. But you know, if someone wants to put the whole thing in, that is fine as well. Or cover the whole thing up, that is fine as well. And then it's gonna look like, it's gonna be hard for me to do that without covering them, but you can see how I, I covered it up with the top coat. On the top, the insect's head is sticking out. But it's just hard to see. Like, yeah, right there, you can see it a little bit. It's sticking out a little bit. Okay. And then you just leave it for a while. So here's this video. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoy the lesson and hope we can give you some more later on down the road. Thanks a lot for everything. I'll talk to you later. This is Jason saying goodbye. That was amazing. Learning new words and concepts can be fun. Similar to paleontology, an appreciation for literature involves spending time with books, identifying important parts of the book and really feeling like you know the book. Belkis looks like she's having an interesting time with books. Let's go find out what she's up to. Hi Belkis, what are you doing? Looks like you're a book detective. Hi, well, I am investigating books. Wow, that sounds fun. But what exactly are you looking for? I'm looking for dinosaur clues through the pages of this book. Do you want to help me? Let's find the word dinosaur. It starts with the letter D. There it is, D for dinosaur. In this book, we can search for different items through the pages. Let's ask our friend to find the purple towel. And what about colors? Hmm. Do you see the rainbow? Yes! Right here on the side and on the other side as well. Here's the rainbow. Also, could you find the word rainbow? Through this activity, children can have a different view about the books. They can discover new things, letters, and enjoy the time they spend filling the books, even with all their senses. It will help to develop interest for reading and all the literacy experience. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Belkin. You're welcome. It is never too early to involve your child in the world of books and reading. An important key to raise a reader is letter recognition. Now let's join Tiffany with a fun flip activity called Animals from A to Z. Hello, I'm Tiffany Espinosa and today I'm going to be exploring a flip kit. Let's take a look. Today's activity is based on animals from A to Z or Animales de la A a la Z written by Jao Coutinhas and Pedro Pinto. In this book, we see lots of different animals, one for every letter of the alphabet.
today we're going to create a puppet to represent an animal for one letter of the alphabet. And I know exactly which animal we're going to make our puppet about. It'll be a dinosaur. What we'll need are of course scissors and glue, a paper lunch bag, construction paper of the color you need, and you can also have other, other materials like felt, foam paper, feathers, googly eyes are always fun, tissue paper, and yarn, but those are optional. Just whatever you need to make your animal complete or your dinosaur complete. Before we get started, we always need a plan. So think about where your mouth, your eyes are going to go. What color will your dinosaur be? Will you have a green dinosaur or a red one? Will your dinosaur have wings like a pterodactyl, or a beak? Will it have a tail or claws? Think about all of these things before you get started and then bring your dinosaur to life. What letter makes the D, D sound? That's right, it's the letter D. D makes the D sound. D is for dinosaur. What other animals can you think of? What other things can you think of that begin with the letter D? When you're finished with your dinosaur, you can put on a show using your puppet and some items from around the house. Have some fun with your dinosaur. For this and more fun activities, visit HoustonLibrary.org to request more flip kits to take home and do with your family. With over 250 kits in our catalog, the love of reading and learning can go on and on. Bye. Here at the Children's Museum Houston, we promote literacy through our Read Strong All Year Long initiative, which aims to engage kids in interactive literacy related activities throughout the museum. Let's join Evelyn as she shares all about our Parent Resource Library, a Houston Public Library located here within our museum. Hello, I'm Evelyn and I am the library manager here at the Children's Museum of Houston. I want to welcome you to our parent resource library. Did you know that this little library here is part of the Houston Public Library system? Now currently we're closed to visitors, but I wanted to show you around a little bit. Okay, so our library collection includes a number of children's um, easy readers, I can read type of books, and then we also have a nice collection of picture books. Many of these are uh, classics and um, books by you know, uh, very well-respected authors. We have uh, many DVDs and uh, we have magazines that you can read here in the library. We also have a very large collection of books for uh, adults on parenting. And um, in that same area of the library, we offer nonfiction books for, for kids. And this might include books on science, books on technology, books on the arts, poetry books, and biographies. Read Strong All Year Long is a literacy program supported by Phillips 66. This program supports the museum's work in encouraging you to participate in reading and also at this point to participate in the summer reading program which is sponsored by the Houston Public Library. All right, so um, we're going to scroll down here to register today and we're going to click on this button and it's going to take you to this screen and, and remember imagine your story is the theme for our summer reading program. You're going to scroll down, it gives you some options. You can register as an individual or a family. So your adults can also register for the summer reading program or if you're already registered on this site then you just sign in here. So this is how it works. First, you're going to register. Just follow the prompts. If you're signed in to this, for the summer reading program or winter reading program earlier, 
this year or last year, you can use your same name or email and the password to log in. But if you've forgotten your password, just click on the I forgot my password link. Then you're going to read at least 20 minutes a day to count the day and complete the virtual exploration and programs to earn even more badges. Then when the libraries open, then you'll be able to collect your badges and your free books. And you'll have a wonderful summer of reading. Thank you so much on joining me on a brief introduction to our uh, Parent Resource Library. It's a pleasure to be with you. And I hope that you learn something about our library and you'll come and visit us again soon. And don't forget, register for the summer reading program. Have a great summer and happy reading to you. Music is a great way to get your child engaged in stories. Let's listen to some storytelling through songs from our friends, the Top Tunes Band. Do the dinosaur stomp, stomp, stomp. 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 Do the dinosaur stomp, dinosaur stomp. Do the dinosaur stomp, stomp, stomp. Do the dinosaur jump, jump, jump. Do the dinosaur jump. Chomp, do the dinosaur chomp, 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 do the dinosaur chomp, 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 do the dinosaur chomp, dinosaur stomp, do the dinosaur chomp, 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 do the dinosaur womp, 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 do the dinosaur womp, 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 do the dinosaur womp, womp. Womp, do the dinosaur womp Womp, womp, do the dinosaur womp The dinosaur chomp, do the dinosaur stomp Womp, chomp, a womp, it's chomp Do the dinosaur jump Jump, jump, do the dinosaur jump Jump, jump, do the dinosaur jump Jump, jump, jump. do the dinosaur jump Jump, jump, do the dinosaur jump Jumping and stomping and whooping and jumping and stomping and whooping and jumping and stomping and whooping and jumping and stomping and Wow. Oh boy. Okay. We hope you have enjoyed today's learning adventures with Children's Museum Houston. We would like to thank PNC Bank and Fox 26 My 20 for this program. See you next time.